The best way to start this one is that I see that I have squares and the second thing I notice is that all of my dimension are in feet and inches. So a lot of times I like to think of this for math's sake to make it a lot easier is to convert those to inches. So that just tells me that the two highlighted dimensions I have is at 16. So if I look at those and keep in my mind that they're 16 inches, it'll make creating these using polygons really easy. When I use polygons I have to cut these numbers in half. So this being 16 I know that the radius of my polygon and I know that sounds kind of strange when I'm referring to a square but the radius of my polygon is going to be 8 and that should get me my square on the outside of this one. Same goes for this dimension of 10 on the inside. So when I create the one of 10, I'm thinking of that in 5. If I can do a little bit of math and see that the inside when I have a half inch thickness on both sides. So if I take away that half inch twice from this number, that should give me that that should give me the inside of my square here is 9 going across. So that one will have a radius of 4.5. So the way I try to think of these is as I'm setting this up if I get the radius of 4.5, 1 of 5, this one is 8, and I'm also going to do this one as well. So I have 1.5 taken away on both sides. That'll give me 3 off. If it's 16, then I take away that 3. That'll give me 13. So 6.5 should be what I need to create the square to locate the center of my circles. Okay, so let's go over to AutoCAD and kind of show you what I'm thinking of in my mind while I'm thinking out loud. I know this may be a little bit confusing to you. So let's open up AutoCAD and start creating. So the first thing we're going to do here in AutoCAD is I'm going to use the polygon command. Next I'm going to tell it how many sides I have and it's going to be a square so I have four sides. I'll specify the center which is located here and now I'm going to think about this as inscribed or circumscribed. Well, if I fit a circle on the inside of that, and that's going to be the radius that I'm going to need, I'm going to use a circumscribed. Next, I have to give this a distance apart, and then that's that radius number that I was referring to. So I'm just going to turn my ortho on. Then I can go this way. Remember that that outside dimension was 1 foot 4? That's 16. So half of 16 is simply 8. Next, let's go ahead and create another square on the inside of this one using the polygon command again. So I go to polygon. I have four sides. The center of this one is located at the center of my square here. Remember, there's a couple of ways we can do this. We can easily use geometric center or we can track from the two midpoints. If I track from this midpoint, and I'm tracking this midpoint. And remember, I'm just touching them. Do not click on them. And when I come down, I will get the point of where they intersect. If, that, if you don't like using that method, you can always shift and right click. Choose Geometric Center. And the star should appear as you touch the edge of your square. A star will appear in the middle. Choose Circumscribed. And this one has a distance. Remember the overall distance of this square is 10. So half of that is simply 5. Let's go back and create the square on the inside. Remember we have that half inch offset on the inside of each side. So the overall dimension of that square is going to be 9. So back to polygon. I have 4 sides. I can shift and right click and choose geometric center touch any one of these squares because they do have the same geometric center. Click on that geometric center, choose circumscribed, and that distance is simply 4.5. So now I have constructed everything that I need for my squares. Now I need to place the center of my circles. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a square where my circles will be. Polygon, 
four sides is the same. I'll locate my center exactly like I did the other previous squares. Set the geometric center here. It's circumscribed. And now you remember that it is 1.5 from the edge of here. So that's going to be applied to both sides. And that number is 3. So 3 minus 16. It should be 13. And 13 and half should be 6.5. Now we have all of our points that we need to finish this. Let's go ahead and put the circles on the outside. So circle, center, diameter. I'll click this endpoint, and it has a diameter of 1.5. I'll do that three more times. So I'll use the circle, center, diameter, or I could have hit the enter button, select this endpoint, and it's the exact same size circle as my last one, so I can hit the enter button. Let's keep doing it. So I'll just hit the enter. I'll select this endpoint. I'll kind of pull out a little bit just to preview it. And then I will hit enter. Do the same here. So enter. Go to this endpoint. Just kind of preview your circle a little bit. And then hit enter. Let's go ahead and delete our square that's on the inside here and that's one kind of easy way of thinking about this now normally I would have switched this over to architectural units but I'll show you that in another example later on throughout the course this is probably the easiest way to create this one 